Hello there, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising. We are here talking about the lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus that is occurring on the 28th of October at 5 degrees. This is a final completion, a final eclipse in the Scorpio-Taurus uh, axis that was started um, about the fall of 2021. So for some of you, you're going to be experiencing uh, some really big endings. Maybe you've got some things coming to fruition for you. So we're going to talk about the energy that's coming in with this eclipse, see what's being highlighted for you guys at this time. And we are also going to pull some cards and see what other messages come out. So this particular eclipse, um, it is a big one, right? Because it is this big completion um, in this energy. Taurus is a sign of money and resources. So some of you could have something coming to fruition in regards to your money, your finances. Uh, you might be paying off loans. You might be uh, joining forces with other people, pooling your money together, that kind of thing. Um, but something that you've manifested may come to fruition. However, with it being an eclipse, eclipses can bring endings. They can shake things out of the woodwork. You may get some surprises around this time, um, but you could also uh, be embarking on a path of something new or better or more improved, but it requires you to let something go, to leave something behind. Eclipses do bring change um, and they can bring those faded events too. So in this particular energy, you are very encouraged at this time to connect with some nature, to ground and protect your energy. It is very chaotic. Um, eclipses are meant to shake things up. And in that energy, sometimes we feel a little bit emotional. We feel the intensity coming in and in the Taurus energy, very connected with the earth. Uh, keep things simple, try and find some quiet space and time and get out and connect with nature in some way, whether you're connecting with water or whether you're connecting with trees or plants. Uh, maybe you even want to bring the outside inside, right? Bring some plants inside your house and that can really help you as well. Just something to make you feel more connected with the earth and with the universe at large. Um, just keep it a little bit simple in this energy. It is a time of reflection. Full moons do bring out intense emotions. Um, and it uh, does bring a big reflection energy, especially when you're looking back the last six months, last 12 months, last 18 months in your world. What has changed? What has evolved? What do you still need to complete or what is blossoming in your world right now? Now, this is happening in your seventh astrological house. And the seventh house is ruled by Venus. And it is Libra energy in here. And we did just have a new moon, a solar eclipse in the sign of Libra. So Venus is very much large and in charge at this eclipse. Venus rules Taurus and Libra. So you got this double dose of Venus, Venusian energy, and this can really help you. Um, it can help bring some creative energies to you. Um, but the seventh house has to do with relationships. And this is all kinds of relationships, not just romantic ones, although granted, it can be that that's highlighted for you right now at the moment as well. Um, but this can be friendships, business partnerships. Uh, family relationships and yes of course it can be love and romance as well so some of you are getting prepared to welcome new love in your life some of you are getting a current relationship a partnership back on track in some way and some of you could very well be meeting some new people getting yourself out there getting out of your shell a little bit here Scorpio um, because we do have Venus not only ruling your seventh house bringing you love and all this wonderful things, um, bringing you some money perhaps there as well. Um, but Venus is also in your 11th house. And in your 11th house, this is ruled by Uranus and Aquarius. And this is all about your future. Um, the 11th house is about getting yourself out there, connecting with people, connecting with your neighborhoods. Um, so you might be uh, finding that you might have some very helpful and supportive people around you at this time. This can be people and partnerships that you already know about. This can also be about spreading your wings and meeting new people. You might be cleaning up things like your social media at this time, um, out with the old, in with the new, right? As we evolve, as we grow, as we move through life, we do um, sometimes no longer resonate with the people or, or groups that we're connected with. So this can be some changes in that area for you. Um, but your 11th house with Venus there, this is all about your wishes. 
What are you wishing for? What are you hoping for? So something really magical can be happening for you at this time. This also does have to do with freedom, finding freedom, freeing yourself from restrictions, from uh, inhibition, from fear, right? Uh, anything that's not working for you, okay? It's time for this big evolution here in your world, all right? So we have the spider energy, and this is patterns. And so, you know, some of you are recognizing the patterns in your life um, with things that have happened in your past, with things that you're like, you know what? I recognize this. I'm not going to do this anymore. And remember, we do have uh, some faded energy with these eclipses. And part of this can be the end of a big old cycle and, and those patterns and habits and behaviors that we all have and that do change over time. So you might be recognizing a pattern in your life, like a theme of some kind. You might be recognizing maybe it's your third time around with some sort of um, relationship and you're like, why do I keep doing this? I keep choosing the same people. I keep, or the same type of people, um, the same things, the same, same thing, themes keep coming up. And this is your opportunity here to break those patterns, whatever that happens to be. But the spider also does bring an energy of creation, right? Spiders are very intricate. They weave the web. Um, everything is very connected in our world. So you might be getting some deeper understanding about how some puzzle pieces do fit together. Um, but you you may also in this energy be feeling a little bit extra creative. You're connected with the universe around you and you're really coming into your personal power to be able to um, to make something happen in your life there, right? But you got to, it might defy logic. So you got to really tap into your creative juices there. And a lot of you are very talented, very creative, um, a little bit mysterious, right? Sometimes they're Scorpio. Uh, so this can be a time where maybe there's been something that you've been creating in the background, uh, something that you've been doing, and this may be an opportunity for you to share something with the world. We do have this very people-y energy that comes with your 11th house. So maybe you um, share something online or maybe you've been working on a website, huh? web, website, right? Um, you know, maybe you've got some real talent in that area. So we can really be stepping into your own personal gifts and talents um, in this energy. But most specifically, that spider does represent those patterns uh, that you may be recognizing right now. And you know what? Recognizing something is the first step to changing it if we don't like it, right? You could also be recognizing things in other people as well, because the seventh house um, does have to do with your relationships with people. But with the 11th house, it can be other people. So perhaps you are recognizing some patterns and behaviors that other people have. And again, this might be where you are willing to just kind of drift away from some connections in your life because you're like, you know what? I'm not that person anymore. I just don't feel the connection anymore and I got to go find new people. All right. We've got ghost energy coming in here for you. We have determination. It's very hard to see. It's very yellow. Okay. Determination coming in there. And we also have balance. For you as well. So the ghost energy can very much represent that there is someone trying to talk to you right now. Um, eclipses are very spiritual and this particular eclipse of course happens right before Halloween. Of course we're at the very start of Scorpio season so happy birthday to you guys. Um, and so the veil is very thin at this time of year. So the connection between the 3D realm and the uh, the universe, our um, spiritual realm, if you want to call it, if you want to call it that, um, is very, very thin. And so we can connect with our spiritual soul tribe a lot easier, but especially with the ghost energy, past loved ones, our ancestors um, from this lifetime and also past lives can really come into play right now. So this is a wonderful time of year for you to really connect with the web 
of energy that we've got around. So connect with if you've been feeling like if there's, if you've had some loss in your life and, you know, maybe you want to connect with grandma or, you know, a parent or an uncle, or maybe you have been, you know, kind of curious about some past life energy in your ancestors, right? It's a great time for you to delve into that world. Now, if you're not used to that world, of course, um, before dabbling with the unknown, uh, especially at this time of year, number one, ground and protect your energy. Make sure that you are protected um, before you go doing that, right? We want to make sure that you're only, you know, uh, attracting the energies or the spirits, if you will, that you want, okay? Um, and uh, But you may also want to seek out some um, professional resources at this time as well, like a medium, that kind of thing, if you're interested in talking to someone beyond the veil. So very, uh, very interesting energy. Now, the ghost energy can also represent that there may be something coming up within you as eclipses do um, something coming up that you have not addressed or that you have kind of hidden and this is where something comes to light something bothering you something niggling at you and again it can be a recognition of some patterns or some behaviors that we've had or the type of people that you choose to associate with and you're like why does it always end the same way and you might be recognizing what that's all about so in this ghost energy this is your chance to chase all the shadows away and to clear up some uh clear up some energy out of your life and giving you some freedom right? We like the freedom, but we do have determination and we have balance here as well. Now, you know, some of you have got some really big goals and dreams in this energy, and there's some things that you really want to create, things that you want to manifest in your life, things that you want to accomplish, and you're determined in this energy. I mean, we're not going to get in the way of a Scorpio that knows what they want, right? But sometimes when we have a singular focus and when we've got something that we really want, Sometimes our determination is so strong that we have, we forget about other aspects in our life. So sometimes, you know, you're on the right track, you're getting things done. But when we're out of balance in this energy, because this is not an energy of balance, right? You see this is, you know, kind of a little bit topsy turvy. And in that energy, you're being reminded that yes, we need to focus on our goals and dreams. Yes, we need to um, focus on creating the life that we want. But in the meantime, we also need to remember that everything um, needs balance. So a balance between masculine and feminine, a balance between the yin and the yang, the good and the bad, right? We need to remember that when things are out of alignment, things are out of balance, what happens? We overcompensate in some way and we do things that we regret. We fill the void. So, for example, if you're working working a million hours to get something done or to get yourself a leg up in the world, right? Sometimes it's not a necessity. But if you neglect your own personal health and well-being, um, we quite often, this is where we stop at the drive through every single day on the way home from work, right? This is where, you know, this is where we, um, you know, connect with people or we start drinking or we start partying a little bit or, you know, uh, it's just we overcompensate somewhere, right? So you're being um, called upon to look at areas in your life that may need a little bit tweak, um, a little bit more balance brought in there. But the determina determination and energy is really a powerful energy within you. And this shows that there might be some obstacles in your path. There might be some that you've overcome already. And there's likely to be more in your future because that's the path that we're on. But this shows that that drive, that determination, this beautiful yellow energy that is within you will always see you through. So even if you feel as though things haven't been going your way or if you feel as though you know you've got one roadblock one obstacle after another don't let that deter you from what you want to get done or what you want to change or what you want to accomplish in life we all have a mountain to overcome we all have those mountains to climb but don't let that mountain cast that shadow on you in such a way that you can't see through it that you can't see past it that you can't figure out a solution there's always a solution there's always Always a light at the end of that tunnel and you have a wonderful innate ability to find that.
right? And to keep on moving through. If someone puts Mount Everest in your way, what are you going to do? You're going to grab some climbing shoes. You're going to grab a climbing stick. Um, you're probably going to grab an oxygen tank and you're just going to get her done. You're going to climb that mountain, right? You're not going to let that stand in your path. We've got the two of wands coming in here for you. The queen of swords. And we've got the world coming in. So there's a big completion right there for you. All right. And with that energy, okay, this is a big cycle that's coming to a close. You're um, looking out into the future. You're looking out into the beyond. And you're thinking, where do I go from here? What do I want to do? Essentially, the world is your oyster. So the two of wands, some of you might be trying to make some decisions at this time. Twos do bring about um, balance and harmony. They also bring about decisions. And in the two of wands energy, it's like you might have an idea. Uh, you might have something in your mind that you want to do or that you want to change. And with the two of wands, make a decision and then go for it. But keep an open mind and keep an open heart in that energy because when we have the two of wands, it's really one of those things where we're looking out into the future and our blocks are removed. We've overcome this mountain and our, the world is our oyster. So think big, dream big, um, and you just never know what you might find. We've got the Queen of Swords here as well. Make a decision. The Queen of Swords, a very intelligent, very logical energy, of, brings a lot of clarity and a lot of wisdom. And so this can certainly be your energy. Uh, you've learned some lessons through your life. And you might have some important decisions to make. And with the Queen of Swords, you can make those decisions based on a combination of your intuition and your wisdom that you have gained um, through all of your experiences through life, this lifetime, and your past lifetimes. Queen of Swords also shows, okay, two, the twos, right? Balance, okay? Um, the Queen of Swords also shows there might be something in your world where you do need to find a little bit of balance and you do need to put up some sort of boundaries. Often it starts within us. We need to give ourselves our own boundaries, um, but sometimes we do need to put those boundaries out there. So if you need to have an important conversation with anybody or if you need to decide where your boundaries are, right? Sometimes we get pushed to our limit and it's important to get a boundary up before we're at our limit, right? Um, makes things a little bit easier. So you might have some very important boundaries there uh, to um, uh, to really establish, okay, or stick to, right? No one's, no one's going to mess with the Queen of Swords energy. But there also might be a very important person that you are talking to at this time as well. The Queen of Swords is a very communicative energy. Okay, it is one where you're not necessarily um, wearing your heart on your sleeve, or maybe someone who you're talking to might not wear their heart on their sleeve, but they are very honest, very truthful in what they say and how they present themselves. Really interesting person to kind of talk to and uh, very communicative in this energy. So you could be meeting someone new or you could be talking about the future with somebody in your life, right? Especially the seventh house energy. Um, but of course, some of you may possibly be leaving something behind, leaving a connection behind. And you're going to talk about that because the world card here, the world can bring a very, very um, successful completion of a cycle in your life, right? And of course, this is where we're completing the Scorpio Taurus eclipses in this energy. So, uh, you know, look back, reflect on how far you've come and then give yourself a big old pat on the back. Okay, even if you don't have everything, all the pieces put together, even if you don't have all of your life figured out, um, you know, even if there's things that you still want to do, give yourself a pat on the back for everything that you have accomplished, everything that you have created in your life and everything that you've overcome because you're still here. You're still standing in the world, in the words of Elton John. Right. And so give yourself a pat on the back and celebrate your successes, celebrate your wins, celebrate yourself. Right. Um, very important to do. We forget to do that a lot. Right. And do something nice for yourself, perhaps in this energy as well. But the 
world card does show that you are closing out a chapter, a cycle in your life, and this is an energy of expansion. We've got Jupiter bringing some of you a little bit of luck um, at this eclipse. So this is expansion, growth, maybe some good luck, good fortune headed your way. Definitely some wisdom of some kind. All right. So for some of you, you are heading out to the world. You're expanding, right? You're ready for a fresh start or you're ready to take something to the next level or you're just ready to, you know, really kind of whew, shed some of your past energies and you're feeling lighter, brighter, you're feeling a little bit more free. And uh, it's an awesome energy for maybe for some of you with the two of wands and with the world card, maybe you're going to treat yourself and you're going to go on some sort of trip, some sort of journey somewhere. Okay, maybe you're going to do something fun with some friends. Um, or maybe you're just going to go and explore the world a little bit. And, um, you know, the world card does bring success and abundance, but it can also represent travel. And the world, usually the traditional imagery of the two of wands is someone sitting there with two wands, but also holding a globe, right? And that world, right? So, you know, you might be really um, having a look and saying, you know what, I've done so many things, I'm ready for a break. So you might be doing a little bit of travel in that energy. But the world card can bring closure as well, and it can possibly bring endings. Right. We've gone as far as we can go in this situation or with this partnership and it's time to break free. It's time for this to come to an end and it's time to move forward. Right. So some of you do have some very important decisions to make at this um, at this eclipse, but it's probably not a surprise. Um, because ultimately, if there is something that you are thinking of parting ways from, right, you've probably been thinking about it for a little while. So it may not necessarily be, it, you might surprise yourself in the fact that you actually follow through, right? But it may not be a surprise that this energy is there. We have the age of light. You've been training for this for lifetimes. This is a time where a lot of you are experiencing some really big spiritual growth. You're also experiencing some personal, mental, mental, physical, emotional growth here as well. But you are stepping into a new phase, a new period of living, a new way of new, living, a higher consciousness in here for you. And whatever it is that you've got on your path in front of you, you have all of the life experience, the wisdom that you need to get you through. And isn't this very interesting how this has come out? So we've got um, a pyramid, right? Looks like a pyramid, right? We've got this beautiful white light coming down. Some of you are having one hell of an epiphany at this time. And then if we look at the determination part as well, I don't know how well you can see it, but we've got this pyramid, this mountain, but there's a light over on the other side. So this is a beautiful, uh, beautiful symmetry coming in here for you with this energy, because for some of you, you have gone through your dark night of the soul. You have gone through a very challenging period in your life. You've been through what feels like probably the last couple of years, like, OK, can we just be done with the life lessons already? Because, wow. Right. So you are ready to face the future and you might be a little bit um, <laughs> a little bit worried <laughs> about what the future may hold. Right, especially if you've gone through a lot of cycles, a lot of ups and downs over the last few years. But this has prepared you for your next stage, for your next cycle. So follow the light, embrace the light, open your heart, really trust your intuition, Queen of Swords there, right? Uh, you've got that wisdom flowing to you and through you, but you've got that light flowing through you and through you as well. Okay, so embrace that. All right, so very powerful energy for you guys. So let's grab a couple more cards here for you. Thank you. <clears throat> Card. The blessing of questioning. Examine and identify any belief that stems from an irrational fear. Ask yourself, do I need this? If the answer is no, then replace it with trusting, more loving belief. Blessings flow to you as soon as you do this. Set yourself free. Next card. A blessed time. The path is clear and all obstacles have vanished. Wow, two of wands and the world card. Nice. Your time of waiting is over, so proceed with confidence. 
The challenges you have faced were essential, for there is a perfect time for everything. Now is your perfect time to be blessed by the universe. Isn't that wonderful? Beautiful message for you. I've been asked to leave that there. I hope there was something here that resonated with you on some level. If there was, please do take a moment and press that like button. It really does let me know you resonate with the reading, whether it was just a little bit or whether it was the whole thing. It also lets YouTube know you like the reading as well, and then YouTube shows it to more people. But if you do enjoy my content, please also do hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell and you'll always, well, maybe always, it depends on if YouTube's working or not, but you should, in theory, get notification as to whenever I post new readings, which is just about every single day I post something. All right. But I thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a wonderful and magical eclipse and I will see you guys next time. Bye.